Greetings explorers of the verse. In this video we will be covering advanced navigation procedures to reach an OM coordinate in version 3.11 of Star Citizen. Our first tutorial showed us how to mark an unknown location and find our way back to it. But using OMs as landmarks for navigation can be quite tricky for some of you and especially at low altitude. Difficulties like spotting the OMs, your position always shifting, and not to mention the weather effects now in place in the game. So let's see how to do this with the fastest and easiest way possible with only our navigation skill. The process is composed by two major steps. A reading of a sector which we'll call spot the zone and the corresponding approach that will optimize our speed and visibility. To spot the zone, we need to quickly analyze the coordinates once we're in position at the origin point and facing the right sector. We split the sector in three types of zones. These zones are simply called Zone A, B and C, but also called Alpha Bravo and Charlie. The zone A or Alpha is the closest area between you and the Celestial. Typically it is the area right in front of you and it means that the origin point is very close to our targets and consequently very far from the other two OMs. To declare a coordinate to be in an alpha zone, we then need a very low distance value on the origin point, and high distance values on the opposite OMs, with not much difference between the two of them. The lower the value of the origin point, the more likely your target is near the center of the celestial. Zone B, or Bravo, represents a corridor outside of the zone A, between the origin point and one of the opposite OM. To declare a coordinate to be in a Bravo zone, we need an equivalent distance value between one of the opposite OM and the origin point with consequently the remaining OM with a high distance value. OM2 in this example is quite equivalent to the origin point, while OM6 is a far distance. If your coordinates don't seem to target zone A or B, well you know what to spot. Zone C, or Charlie, is basically all what's left from A and B. The perspective may fool you, but zone Charlie is the largest area in a given sector. The only purpose of dividing a sector in zones is to help us define the navigation process we will be using. They will differ in waypoints, distances and altitudes, but will mostly all use the same basics. So once we have defined in what zone our target should be, we'll start our approach. And as is the most common and basic, we'll start with an example in zone C. We have to find our coordinate to be somewhere in zone C. We pick up the closest value of the origin point in our coordinate. Here it is OM5 with 268.4 km. We aim in its direction and engage full speed. Our first step won't be to match the right target distance. Instead we'll leave a margin between 40 and 50 km and remain in orbit. In our example here, OM5 target is 268.4, by adding 40 gives us 308 kilometers. So our first waypoint will be to position ourselves at 308 kilometers from OM5 in orbit. We slow down to reach our distance smoothly. Three, one, two. This is good enough. We do not need real precision yet. Now let's focus the farthest OM of our coordinate, OM4 in our example. 
We're standing at 384 kilometers from OM4 and our target distance is 320.5. This time we'll leave a margin of 10 kilometers upon our approach and reach 10k altitude, which gives us another waypoint around 330 kilometers from OM4. Managing your angle of approach is very important to match the right altitude and position. So don't hesitate to dive in a harsh angle or to maintain the right altitude regarding the situation. Just check on your OM from time to time if you're still far away from it. Do not struggle to try to always have it in sight. We are now around 8.7 clicks altitude and reach the proper distance. It's not perfect, but looks good enough for our next move. Let's head back to our previous OM and check what is our position now. OM5 is now 301 away from us. We then have just 30 kilometers to go. This time we will position ourselves at the right target distance of 268 kilometers for one or 2k altitude and ignore the meters for now. All right, now that we are well positioned on OM5, let's come back to OM4 to check. Three two six kilometers away, just six kilometers to go. Our last maneuver will be to simply get a right position from these two OMs with the little distances that are left and take now the meters into account. Done. Now let's have a look around. Here it is. The navigation of Zone Type C, or Charlie, should be considered to always be the one by default if you're not sure to spot the right zone. We have defined this coordinate to be somewhere in zone B. We start by picking up the closest value to our origin point in our coordinate. Here it is 245.3 from our OM2. We aim in its direction and engage at full speed. For a target in Bravo zone, we will reach our first waypoint with a 10k margin. That gives us a distance of 255 kilometers to reach from OM2 in our current example. And we'll also reach 10k altitude. The more the values between the origin point and this OM are close, the lower this altitude can be, but never less than 5k. Adjust your angle accordingly along the way. Again, don't hesitate to lose your focus on the OM to maintain the right altitude. Managing the altitude is very important. We slow down to get our position right. Good. Now let's focus on our farthest OM. Here it's OM6 with a target distance of 351.3 kilometers. Let's have a look at it. We stand at 373.7 kilometers. Our actual distance from this OM is crucial to define our next move. If we were quite close to the target distance, we would have to immediately reach surface. But in our example, we are around 20 kilometers away from our distance target. This is far enough to take an angle between 15 and 30 degrees on our approach. But if we had a smaller gap, we would choose an abrupt angle to reach the surface. 
So for our next waypoint, we'll reach the right target distance with a disregard for the meters and aim for an altitude of between 1 and 3k. We are looking good. Now aim back to our previous OM. A small gap to fill here. Let's go to the right distance target. Always have a last precision check with the farthest OM and adjust the meters if necessary. Now let's have a look around. And here's our target. We have defined the coordinate to be somewhere in zone A. We check for the closest OM from our origin point in the coordinate. Here it is OM4. Then we aim for the center of the celestial and adjust an angle between the center and this OM. Now we simply reach the atmosphere as fast as possible and aim for 10k altitude. Note that our actual waypoint is an approximation Alpha zone is a versatile one, and choosing the first waypoint has no real rule of thumb. We know that the smaller the value of the origin point is, the more likely our target will be close to the center of the celestial, right under the origin point. Also, the more identical the values of the opposite OMs are, the more likely our target will be on the center of the sector. It is strongly suggested to start braking the moment you kick in the atmosphere. Angles of approach on an alpha zone can be very abrupt, so be careful. Especially at night and or with a large ship. We arrived at our destination with an altitude of 11k. Good enough to check on our OMs. Let's see. 3-5 kilometers away from OM4. Now let's check the farthest OM1. We have just 3-3 three, three kilometers to go on this one. Looks like our target should be right in between, but let's reach the farthest OM. We'll match the right distance, but ignore the meters. Maintain your 10k altitude for now. We are in position. Now let's simply wrap this up by matching the previous OM. Final check on the meters, let's have a look around. Here's our target. As we said earlier, Alpha Zone targets are versatile. You may find your target in two steps or may end up close to a target distance. If you have doubts on your approach, just aim right above the center, aim for a 10k altitude and make your corrections the same way. But with practice and coordinate readings, you may just spot the right area to descend to. There's something important that we have not talked about yet. How to aim at an OM. So far you may have noticed that we have never directly aimed at an OM. And it's actually very important. We actually never do that and there are two reasons for this. 
First, we don't want our engine to start spooling, as the sound may be quite invasive over time, but more important because we lose vital screen information such as velocity and altitude. And secondly, there's a more technical reason for this. The way we aim at an OM allows us to slowly position ourselves from the next OM in line. Let's see how it works. We're facing a sector we are about to scout. While we are positioning ourselves on our first waypoint in orbit, you can observe that we're aiming on the OM side. We're doing so to reduce the distance from our next target, while reducing the distance from our actual target. On the contrary, if you want to outrun an OM while working on another one, aim at the opposite side. May be useful if you got too close by mistake. And if you don't want to shift your position from the other OM, aim above or under it, depending on your altitude, of course. Such aiming methods will definitely save you some time. Superplanets are way much bigger celestials, but you can apply the same navigation process to it. Just be aware that it will take way much longer to achieve. However, Nova's Pathfinders have a faster process to reach our target. We will cover superplanet navigation in the next video. Spotting the right zone may look vague at first, but once you get it, it becomes natural. If we compare with our first tutorial, you may have noticed that on every approach we made, we never checked on our origin point's position at any time. We found our targets with the other two OMs for guidance. For our Nova members who are familiar with the Frontier Star map, you will now see appearing these three symbols. Hopefully explicit, they represent the zone type of all coordinates we have in our database. With these three examples, we have the three basic kinds of approach for navigation with a coordinate. They all look alike, but the light differences can save you some time and ease your journey. Get to know your ship perfectly. Practice your orbital approaches, and you'll navigate faster and faster every time. And for those of you who are not quite fond of navigation or find all of these processes to be too complicated, you may know that this coordinate system gave birth to some navigation tools to guide you along the way. Nova members may find the navigation tool from our master engineer, Sandoval, in our Discord or directly linked from our star map. Visit us for more information. Thank you for watching, and we do hope some content of this video has been useful to you. Never stop exploring, and fly safe!